In case you haven't already noticed, nature is one seriously freaky place. And I'm not just talking about your run-of-the-mill creepy crawlies. I'm talking sickening sights like this bulbous beetle, real-life mind control, and creatures with so-called special talents that look more like something straight out of a horror movie. If those weren't enough to make you throw your phone across the room in horror, you should totally stick with me as I uncover some of the creepiest corners of nature that are sure to send chills running down your spine. <laughs> Womb Hijacking Barnacles Parasites are some of the most cutthroat organisms on Earth, but their sheer badassery often gets overlooked because of how small and stealthy they are. Allow me to introduce you to Saculina carcini, aka the womb hijacking barnacle. It doesn't look like much, but this parasitic barnacle makes its living as a real life body snatcher. Unlike other barnacles that are happy to stick to a rock face and filter food from the water, Saculina carcini prefers its home to be more living. The microscopic larvae of the Saculina use special sensory organs to seek out their hosts before settling on the membrane at the base of one of the crab's hairs called a setae, where its armor is most vulnerable. The larva then transforms itself into a kind of living syringe called a kentragon, which stabs the base of the crab's hair and injects a microscopic blob called a vermigon into the crab's bloodstream. Still with me? Sweet. Because next comes the cool and kind of gross part. This blob then grows into the fully formed parasite, which consists of roots that spread throughout the crab's body, the interna, and the barnacle-like female reproductive organ which protrudes from the crab's abdomen, known as the externa. Once comfortable, Saculina castrates the crab, if it's male, and turns its host into a doting nanny that grooms and aerates the barnacle's own brood until they're ready to hatch. Once Saculina's eggs hatch, they explode out of the crab in true parasite fashion, and the cycle continues. Oh, nature, aren't you charming? Puss Caterpillars If you were to come across one of these fluffy-looking creatures, your first instinct would probably be to bend down and pet it. But whatever you do, do not pet a puss caterpillar. These insects have been compared to Donald Trump's infamous quaff in recent years, so it's no surprise they're also nicknamed the toxic toupee of the animal kingdom. In fact, the puss caterpillar, or Megalopagy opercularis larva, is one of the most venomous caterpillars in the US, and coming into contact with one is a one-way ticket to pain town. Their deceptive outer comb-over actually hides a bunch of small, extremely toxic spines that will stick in your skin kind of like a porcupine, but much, much worse. Those unfortunate enough to have been stung by a puss caterpillar have likened the pain to a bee sting that gets progressively worse over the course of up to 12 hours to the point where even your bones start to hurt. Unfortunately for us, the puss caterpillar population has been growing recently, and there have been many reports of children getting stung after petting the insect. Others have even suffered after caterpillars fell onto them from trees. Great. Another thing to be paranoid about. Thanks, 2020. If you're stung, experts recommend covering the area with cellophane tape and then ripping it off to remove the spikes. If all that wasn't strange enough, when the puss caterpillar matures, it becomes the equally fluffy looking flannel moth, which has a particular penchant for flinging poop away from its body to deter parasites. So it's cool when they do it, but when I do it, I get served a lifetime ban from Starbucks? Jeez, talk about double standards, man. Why do some of the cutest looking creatures have to be so darn deadly? You may not have come across a puss caterpillar before, but have any of you had a nasty experience with another unsuspecting animal? Maybe you got chased by a peacock or bitten by a friendly looking neighborhood squirrel. Whatever it is, I wanna hear about it. Let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to some of my favorites. The Giant Isopod the giant isopod is a creature so prehistoric looking that it's hard to believe that it actually exists in the same timeline as us. These curious crustaceans can be found deep down on the ocean floor and basically look like monstrously sized wood lice or pill bugs, which also happen to be their closest relatives on land. 
Just like Pillbugs, the giant isopod also has the handy ability to roll itself into an armored ball when threatened by predators. The 14-legged goliaths have been recorded to grow up to 16 inches long, easily making them the largest member of the crustacean family. Their size is the result of a phenomenon known as deep sea gigantism, which refers to the mysterious tendency of deep sea crustaceans and animals like the giant squid to grow much larger than those in shallow waters. Besides their enormity, not much is known about the life of the giant isopod, which, if you ask me, only makes them even more unsettling. What we do know is that the isopod is carnivorous, but because food is so scarce on the ocean floor, it relies almost entirely on scraps and leftovers that fall from above like snow. This includes the bodies of dead whales, fish, and squid, but in the absence of any real grub, the giant isopod can survive for over eight weeks without eating. Although they aren't fished commercially, they can occasionally be found on dinner plates in northern Taiwan, where they're boiled and served with rice. That's a big nope for me, though. Toxoplasma gondii Mind control seems like a superpower worthy only of the X-Men comics. But what if I told you it actually exists in nature? The perpetrator is probably not what you'd expect, though. In fact, you could almost say it possesses the power of invisibility too, because you'd need a scientific microscope to get a good look at it. Toxoplasma gondii is a microscopic parasite with some truly terrifying traits, especially if you happen to be a cat. In fact, this single-celled organism has managed to baffle and surprise researchers over the years for the destructive effects it can have on a whole host of animals, including us humans. Although felines are the parasite's primary target, the infection can be passed on to other intermediate hosts, which could be basically any other warm-blooded animal. T. gondii has some serious mind-altering properties, and rats infected with the parasite even become suicidal as it overrides their senses and causes them to to develop a kind of sexual attraction to the smell of cat urine. Instead of their usual defense response to the scent, they make a beeline straight to the nearest cat, at which point they're usually eaten, allowing their stealthy hitchhiker to hop onto their feline host. From there, the parasite can move on to humans, most commonly through contact with cat poop. Although T. gondii typically only causes mild flu-like symptoms, those with weakened immune systems could experience seizures, serious lung problems, and even schizophrenia. Scientists are still exploring exactly how toxoplasmosis affects the human brain, but for now, I'd stay as far away from your cat's poop as possible, which shouldn't be too difficult. Apparently, up to 50% of the world's population have been infected by Toxoplasma gondii without even realizing because most healthy people don't even experience any symptoms. Let's do a quick test to see if you've still got your own free will, shall we? Why don't you try tapping that like and subscribe button first? All done? Phew, no mind control going on there. While you're at it, you should probably hit that little bell icon to stay in the loop with the latest amazing content too. Now let's get back to it, shall we? Lenomia Obliqua If the toxic toupee wasn't enough to prove that all caterpillars aren't as innocent as they look, you should probably familiarize yourself with this bad boy, also known as Lenomia obliqua. Each caterpillar is about four and a half to five and a half centimeters long, with colors ranging from bright green to brown, and they tend to cluster together and camouflage themselves on trees. Those who have encountered the insect in its native home of South America have affectionately referred to it as the death worm, or assassin caterpillar and for good reason. Physical contact with the many bristles that line the creature's body can cause the caterpillar to inject a substance into the skin that contains potentially fatal toxins. These toxins have anticoagulant properties and are known to cause pain, redness, swelling, and an intense burning sensation almost immediately. If you do happen to get stung, the initial pain is the least of your worries, as it will soon give way to headaches, nausea, vomiting, anemia, and many other nasty side effects. The species was first described by English entomologist Francis Walker in 1855, but it became internationally known when an epidemic occurred in an agrarian community in Rio Grande do Sul. Doctors were left scratching their heads when scores of patients came in with hematoma and gangrene-like symptoms, which caused massive blood leakage to the brain and, in many cases, death. At first, the cause couldn't be determined until each victim explained that they had handled a bunch of leafy branches to break the trail or gather vegetation at some point. 
After exploring the area, the only creature commonly found was Lenomia Obliqua, and their fearsome reputation was born. These guys are seriously bad news. Horsehair Worm Have you ever felt so full that you thought you could burst at any moment? Well, take a look at this poor, unfortunate praying mantis, and be thankful you never actually burst. I hope none of you were eating noodles while watching that. What you've just witnessed is the work of the horsehair worm, a bone-chilling parasite which invades hapless insects like crickets, mantises, and grasshoppers before zombifying them and exploding out of their bodies. All across America, in rivers and streams, horsehair worm eggs hatch into tiny larvae and await being eaten by the larvae of other insects like mosquitoes and midges. Once these fully formed insects take to the air and are inevitably scuffed by a cricket or some large predator, the horsehair worm's fun can really begin. According to parasitologist Ben Hanelt from the University of New Mexico, the larva will penetrate through the gut of the cricket and get into the body cavity where they will grow up into a foot-long worm. When the parasite is finally ready to leave its host, it turns the insect suicidal by driving it to kamikaze dive into the nearest body of water, where it escapes through holes bored into the host's body. In fact, the parasite got its nickname because the folks who first discovered them thought they were actual horsehairs that came alive when they touched water. Ah, simpler times. To ensure its chances of survival, the parasite also has the ability to shut their hosts up. That is, stop them chirping if they happen to be a cricket, because that's a surefire way to be found and eaten. Next time someone says zombies don't exist in real life, just point them in this direction. The Paku Paku is a South American freshwater fish that can be found in most rivers and streams in the Amazon and Orinoco River basins of lowland Amazonia. Although they have very different food habits, Paku is related to the meat-eating piranha, but it's not their connection with one of the world's most feared fish that makes these river dwellers so darn terrifying. To find out why the Paku is so chilling, you'll have to make it say, ah, this is not a drill. The Paku's gums really are lined with a set of eerily human-looking teeth. No matter how many times you peek inside a Paku's mouth, you can't help but imagine that someone has just stuffed a set of dentures inside as a prank. Thankfully, the Paku isn't nearly as aggressive as its piranha cousins and generally uses its flattened teeth to crush nuts and fruits. Don't be fooled though, their impressive jaw system can still be hazardous. Because their preferred food is usually dropped from trees in the Amazon, they have occasionally been known to mistakenly try to eat another kind of nuts, the testicles of male swimmers. In fact, a few local fishermen in Papua New Guinea were allegedly castrated by Paku fish, which has earned them the nickname of Ball Cutter. Meanwhile, in 2004, a toddler visiting Edinburgh Butterfly and Insect World required surgery after a Paku in a pond bit her wriggling finger. They may be pretty hilarious to look at, but the Paku is one fish you definitely wouldn't want to get into the water with. Kandaroo. To all the men out there, if you thought the Paku was your biggest worry, I hate to break it to you. You've clearly never heard of the Kandaroo. If you were to visit the Amazon rivers and hear the locals telling stories about this fearsome creature, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was some Goliath sea beast rivaled only by Nessie. In fact, the Kandaroo, more scientifically known as the Vandelia serosa, is no bigger than a human thumb at about an inch and a half long and it certainly doesn't look threatening on first glance. To give you an idea of why this tiny fish is so spine tingling, you should probably know that its nickname is the penis probing fish. You see, the kandaroo has a rather unconventional way of targeting its victims as it waits for its unsuspecting prey to step into the water before swimming upstream and entering the body through the urethra. Once the little blighter arrives at its destination, it sets up camp and is almost impossible to pull back out thanks to its tricky backward-facing barbs. Although some suggested home remedies include a hot bath or herbal soak, there's only one surefire way to eliminate the kandaroo once it's made your crown jewels its home. Complete removal of the offending appendage. The most terrifying thing is that no one really knows exactly what the fish does once inside the penis, but I doubt anyone wants to volunteer to find out. Next time you think about going for a dip in the Amazon, perhaps you should consider strapping a coconut shell over your junk first. Cereal Leaf Beetle on first glance, the cereal leaf beetle doesn't seem particularly threatening. 
In fact, besides decimating cereal crops across Europe and Asia and seriously ticking off the local farmers, they're pretty much your average beetle. But it's not the adult cereal leaf beetle that'll give you the chills. It's their larva. Shall I give you a moment to wipe the sick from your mouth before I continue? When the cereal leaf beetle is just a larva, they often become fat, juicy targets for the predatory Tetrastichus julis wasp, which views the larva as a walking incubator for its own spawn. To execute its evil plan, the wasp will bore into the young beetle and lay around five eggs inside it. When they hatch, the wasp larva will begin to feed on the beetle alive from the inside out which really doesn't sound like a great way to go, does it? But wait, there's something else going on in this disgusting image. Although there is a Teratichus julius wasp larva in this photo, the rest of those horrid worms are actually something else entirely. Poop. That's right, the juvenile beetle skin is stretched shiny tight and close to bursting not only from being parasitized by a wasp, but also from carrying a load of its own excrement. This squirmy looking mass is known as a fecal shield and it's actually a pretty clever way to try and fend off predators. By depositing its own poop on its back, the larva carries around a mobile shield like a big umbrella over its entire body, which supposedly deters predators from wanting to eat them. The thing is, some parasitoids like the Tetrastichus julis wasp are actually attracted to the smelly volatiles in the feces. It's safe to say being reincarnated as a cereal leaf beetle is not at the top of anybody's wish list. Ribbon Worm Plenty of creatures have sneaky tricks hidden up their sleeves, but I'll bet you've never seen something quite like this before. This repulsive and yet strangely satisfying video was filmed in Thailand and shows a type of marine worm known as a bootlace ribbon worm, which also happens to be one of the longest creatures on Earth. There are around a thousand species of ribbon worms in the world, which are usually somewhere between just five to 10 millimeters wide, but five to 15 meters in length. Although specimens up to a whopping 55 meters long have been previously recorded. Sure, the thought of a 55 meter long worm is already pretty gross, but you're probably wondering how and why it projected a slimy looking net onto that dude's hand, right? You see, when the bootlace worm, or one of its ribbon worm cousins, gets irritated, it has the ability to fire out something called a proboscis, which is a unique muscular structure stored inside the worm's body. This specialized feeding appendage is held in a sheath or sac just above the worm's gut, and when prey or predator is detected, muscles rapidly contract and force liquid into the sheath. This turns the proboscis inside out and forces it through a pore at the head of the worm, kinda like the finger of a latex glove inverting on itself. Some species of ribbon worm can fire their proboscis up to 30 times the length of their body, which pretty much solidifies them as the Spider-Man of the animal kingdom, right? Most ribbon worms use this proboscis to catch and draw in prey, while others can pull themselves forward by attaching the sticky appendage to an object. The bootlace worm is also able to produce a powerful toxin in its mucus, which can easily kill crustaceans and cockroaches. Talk about a killer sneeze. Hydnellum pecky. Unless you're an avid gardener, you'd be forgiven for thinking plants are quite boring. Most of them look pretty similar, and we pass hundreds if not thousands of the leafy organisms every day. But have you ever seen one that looks like this? Strictly speaking, Hydnella pecky is not a plant, it's a fungus. But I'm still willing to bet it'd be enough to make you stop dead in your tracks, before throwing up on the sidewalk, probably. It's no surprise that Hydnellum pecky has many other colorful names, including strawberries and cream and the oh-so-repulsive bleeding tooth fungus, thanks to the way it seems to be riddled with dozens of bulbous blood blisters. The gooey red liquid you see is actually a sort of pigmented sap which is caused by a process called guttation. When the soil surrounding the fungus's root system gets super wet, it forces water into the roots through the process of osmosis. This creates pressure throughout the organism, which eventually builds up enough to force the liquid to the surface of the fungus in the form of those repulsive red pustules. Underneath the fungus, you'll also find countless tooth-like protrusions, which create spores to help it reproduce. Shockingly, the bleeding tooth fungus isn't toxic to humans, but it's so bitter tasting that it's practically inedible. Not that you'd wanna eat it anyway. 
Even more surprising is that, as the fungus matures, it loses its disgusting appearance to become a rather dull beige fungus. It's like the ugly duckling of sickening plants. Hemlock Water Dropwort the bleeding tooth fungus may not be particularly dangerous, but while we're on the topic of plants, there is one you should most definitely watch out for, the hemlock water dropwort. Okay, it looks pretty dull, I must admit, but this unsuspecting herb is actually a deadly killer. The plant grows over a meter high in shallow waters like streams, ditches, rivers, and lakes, and is particularly prevalent in Britain. The root is said to have a mildly pleasant taste, similar to a parsnip, Yet the entire plant is highly poisonous and capable of producing intoxication followed by death by asphyxia. But its killing tendencies aren't the only thing that make this plant so chilling. Those who fall victim to the hemlock water dropwort are almost always found with an eerie smile frozen on their faces. This is because the plant's toxins cause the facial muscles to contract before death, contorting the expression into an eternal grin. The hemlock water dropwort has had tons of sinister uses throughout history, and in pre-Roman Sardinian times, the plant was even used to ritualistically bump off any old people who would become a burden to society. So much for respecting your elders. Which of these chilling things would you least like to come across IRL? If you think your heart can take any more, you should totally check out the video on the screen right now where you'll learn about a whole host of terrifying animals you would never want to encounter. I'm just looking out for you. Once again, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.